IU football took to the road for the second week in a row, and this time battled the Iowa Hawkeyes. Could the Hoosiers put a devastating loss against Northwestern behind them and gear up to beat the number four ranked team in the country? The Indiana women's basketball team began exhibition play on Sunday against Lambeth University. See how the Lady Hoosiers fared in their first contest of the 2009-2010 season. And find out how the men's soccer team is battling to stay afloat before the start of the Big Ten tournament. All of this and more inside this edition of Hoosier Sports Night. Welcome into this edition of Hoosier Sports Night alongside former IU wide receiver Brandon walker -Roby and Lucas Mayer. I'm Courtney Cronin. We have full coverage from the IU-Iowa football game from this past weekend. But first, guys, what exactly happened to the Hoosiers for the second straight week in a row? After giving up 26 unanswered points to Northwestern, IU went into this game looking to keep its chances of a bowl game alive. They had to go into Iowa City to do that. Iowa 8-0, Indiana Hoosiers 4-4, this shouldn't be a big problem. IU leads the series 2-1 going into Iowa City. Let's get to the highlight. Iowa, the number four team in the nation with a home game they expected to win easily against IU. A crazy game would ensue. With just over a minute left in the first, Ricky Stanzi looks to go deep on third and 14, but throws it right into the hands of Colin Taylor. The interception would become a theme throughout this game. Into the second quarter with IU leading 7-0, Ben Chappell throws a perfect pass into the end zone cut by the renaissance man, Mitchell Evans. Mitchell Evans can do it all. You put him anywhere on the field, he's going to score a touchdown right there for number five. Under a minute to go in the half, and Amari Spivey of Iowa is going to commit a couple of football sins here. I mean, you just have to be smart. Let the ball go into the end zone, give your team a chance to take it from the 20, and maybe score. IU trying to take advantage. They have a third and eight, and Chapel's going to step back here, and he's going to make a great off-balance throw and hits to Marlo Belcher in the end zone. IU goes into the half, up 21-8, to eight, looking for the upset. Look how happy Bill Lynch is. Iowa fans can only pray. Beginning of the third quarter, and it's not going to get any better here for Ricky Stanzi. I mean, Ricky Stanzi, he's smarter than that as a quarterback. You're number four in the nation. You can't just look one receiver down. You're going to give the uh, defense an opportunity to, to pick you off, basically. Donald Jones makes it happen. The Hoosiers with a third and goal and an absolutely bizarre play here. The ball's going to bounce off four different players and eventually end up as an interception for Iowa and a return touchdown. I mean, that's just a crazy play. You can't do anything about that. As an offensive lineman, you have to get the defensive line hands down. Look at that. Right there, off everybody, into the hands of Iowa, touchdown. Crazy play. IU refuses to stop, though. The next possession, they drive down the field and in the red zone, Chapel uses a quick pump and he's going to look for Turner in the corner, and he's going to hit Turner. Ruled a touchdown, they decided to review the play, and they reversed it. One of a handful of extremely questionable calls in this game. This one did make, not make any sense. You have to wonder what the replay official was thinking. Bill Lynch is irate and has every right to be angry. Seconds left in the third. Stans is going to try to go deep, and he throws his fifth interception. A nightmare day for the Iowa quarterback. You know, when you throw five interceptions, there's no way you should win that game. The Hoosiers, you should have won the game. You had five turn or six turnovers. There's no way you should have lost. Fourth quarter now. IU up by 10. Iowa backed up deep in their own territory. Stansy on the play-action rollout. He's going to hit Marvin McNutt, who's going to shed the tackle, and he sees green ahead. He's going to score easy and a serious coverage breakdown by the Hoosiers. That's going to cost them and put Iowa within three points. You know, Stanley, he's a great quarterback. He's a big player, and he's going to make big plays. And right there, he finds the receiver and takes it in for the score. Iowa with the ball again. Stanley with the play action, and he's going to hit a wide open. Johnson Koulianos, who will then give Iowa the lead despite their six turnovers. I mean, once again, Drew Stanzi makes a play, but as, as a Hoosier, you have to make that tackle right there. You can't give him the opportunity to just walk into the end zone that easy. Indiana trying to get back into the game. That they have completely blown. Ben Chappell is going to continue that with a nice throw right to the safety, Sean Prater. IU is going to end up losing this one 42-24, an extremely disappointing result for Indiana. This one is going to sting for a while. Iowa quarterback Ricky Stanzi was surprisingly named player of the game by the announcers, even though 
he was sacked three times and threw five interceptions. On the other hand, Ben Chappell completed 23 of 41 passes for 227 yards and two touchdowns. Darius Willis had another great day with four receptions for 34 yards and 21 rushes for 63 yards. It was the collapse of the IU defense in the second half that led to the Iowa comeback, with the Hoosiers falling 42-24. to All right, thanks, Lucas. Let's get into the discussion now. Brandon, we see this two weeks in a row with the breakdown of the IU defense against Northwestern. Defense gives up 26 unanswered points. What happens against Iowa this week? They're ahead in the fourth quarter, and they just, you know, everything just like fell apart. You know, this is kind of the story for the Hoosiers, giving up big plays in the fourth quarter. It happened in Northwestern and it happened here again um, in Iowa. You know, Ricky Stanzi went three for three, 177 yards and two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. And when you give up those type of plays and those type of numbers in the big in the fourth quarter, there's no way you're going to win. The front seven has to get pressure on Ricky Stanzi and not give him as much time to find an open receiver. And that honestly gives receivers enough time to find the holes in the defense, which is what happened. And when you get a opportunity to make a tackle you have to make the tackle. Brandon one of the things the defense has been able to do lately is get turnovers but the offense can't do anything with them they're getting field goals they're punting they can't get those touchdowns can you talk about that? Yeah that's one thing coach Lynch always emphasizes to us you have to get turnovers you have to force turnovers and then when you get those turnovers you have to convert you have to score off of those turnovers because that's a part of the game you're not always going to score on an offensive play or a special teams play you're sometimes you're going to score on a turnover and that's what the Hoosiers pretty much haven't done or didn't do in Iowa and as well they didn't convert on third downs as much as they should have and didn't convert in the red zone. You know, third down conversions is a stat that everyone looks at. And when you want to score and beat a big team like Iowa, you have to convert third downs and score in the, and score in the red zone. One of the most disappointing things we saw in this game was, in my opinion, the Terrence Turner touchdown that was called back. And it, was, it was not ruled a touchdown. Indiana had 21-14 at that time. They would have gone ahead even further, 28-14. Regardless of the officiating, whether it was controversial or not, how does that feel as a player, like ruining your stamina and just kind of messing up, messing up your how, however the team's doing at that point? How you does know, that feel? I, honestly, as a player, it hurts when you know you scored a touchdown, you made a big play for your team, and it gets overturned, and you knew that you had that play. I mean, it hurts, but you have to move on from that. You have to play the next play, which is something that Coach Lynch often emphasizes to the team: play the next play. And I mean, I feel like the Hoosiers did a great job of playing the next play, even though they didn't get the outcome they were looking for. Indiana has a big game now against Wisconsin. What do they need to do to prep to win this game? And as a player, how do you mentally get over these two devastating losses? I mean, you just, you just can't think about it. Once again, play the next play, move on, play the next game. And uh, you just have to realize as a team, you know, those, this is where the, the captains and the leaders and those 24 seniors they have on this team need to step up and let the younger guys know, hey, we're still in this. We can still play 13, which is what we established as our goal at the beginning of the season. We can still make this ball game. We have three games to win two, you know, basically. So as a senior, I'm going to step up and let the young guys know, let the young receivers know, let the young old linemen know, hey, we have this, let's prepare, let's play Wisconsin, and let's, let's make things happen. All right, thank you, Brandon. Hopefully the Hoosiers will be able to win their fifth game of the season this coming Saturday against Wisconsin in order to keep their bowl chances alive. In other news, this coming week, Indiana University is honoring former basketball coach Bob Knight and inducting him into the IU Athletics Hall of Fame. However, Knight has not returned to Bloomington since he was fired by Miles Brand in 2000 and claims he is not coming nor wants anything to do with the school. Casey Richards hits to the streets to find out what students thought about Knight's decision. Perhaps nowhere else has a university's relationship with its legendary head basketball coach deteriorated as much than right here at Indiana University. Bob Knight has not returned to Bloomington since he was fired back in 2000, and it appears as if that stretch will continue. ESPN's Dick Vitale recently announced on his Twitter feed that Knight will not return to Bloomington to attend the IU Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony. This sends months of speculation about whether or not Knight would accept the athletic department's olive branch. I think he, he definitely deserves uh, to be in the Hall of Fame, but you can kind of expect it from him to, to not show up, but it's... It's kind of a bad move on his part, but he, he still deserves to, to get the award. I mean, it, it is disappointing that he doesn't want to come back, but if that's his decision to not come back, then we should just be happy with that. No, it's too bad. You know, he, he meant a lot to the school, and, and I think a lot of fans would really appreciate it if he uh, came back. So it's too bad that he can't uh, get over the firing and make his way back here. Well, it's kind of disappointing, but it's not surprising considering he got fired. I mean, 
if I got fired, I wouldn't want to go back to where I came from. I think it would have been good for the school, though, if he came back to show that he doesn't hate us. <laughs> um, but it's his like like choice if he wants to come or not. I understand his uh, feelings, but I just want him to know he's like the greatest coach of all time, especially here at IU, and uh, just thank him for that. I'm Casey Richards. Who's your sports night? When we return, women's basketball hits the hardwood for the first time this season in a preseason game against Lamba. And men's basketball is getting pumped to begin their season. All the details from Pep Rally hosted in their honor coming up after the break.